Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector channel. Today on the bench we have a very special watch. It's actually the watch uh, from one of my viewers which has a very uh, special history. It was his watch of his uh, grandfather that uh, uh, unfortunately is not, uh, is not around us anymore. But uh, yeah, you see the watch is quite in rough condition. But uh, yeah, I think we can do something good about it. Let's check if we can uh, work. So you see it's a chronograph watch from Psycho. It's a Psycho 6139. Uh, the Siva Ghost, I will explain a bit later on why it's called the Siva Ghost, and we can see there first, the first issue. The button is very sticky there to start and stop the chronograph. I had to pull on it to, to stop it. But the watch is working. Um, so yeah, like I said, like this watch has a, a very huge sentimental value for, for, for the person. So it's always great to work with some of the watches like this, and um, especially it's a nice watch, and as well it has a, a very special meaning. So yeah, it's great that uh, you, when you can restore so, like beautiful watches, and we talk a bit a bit later on as well. This uh, this watch has a, a big history as well. This movement from Psycho is um, is part of uh, watch making history. I will explain explain a bit more a bit later on. But let's open the watch. And actually, on the serial number, you can see the watch is from seventy seven June seventy seven actually. And uh, wow, look at the grease there on the column wheel. This uh, orange, like yellow stuff, yeah. I even not sure, like the, the owner told me, like this watch maybe was never serviced actually. Uh, it was put in a drawer like uh, 20 years ago when his father passed away and uh, he stayed there since. So, yeah, this watch probably was not open for at least like 20 years, but uh, he said, like, yeah, he thinks that he was never serviced. And funny story actually that uh, the person sent the watch to Psycho. Uh, to have it uh, serviced, and uh, actually Psycho returned the watch and said that uh, it's not uh, it's not possible to service the watch. Yeah, so yeah, that's the problem you can find like with a lot of uh, vintage watches. Some of the brand actually they are uh, organized to service like modern watches, but uh, not to service like these old old watches like from the 70s, 60s, of even more. Up oh, one of the pushers just jumped there. You know, go very far, fortunately. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's funny. And actually, you have to go to to watchmakers, to um, like independent watchmaker, to have your vintage watches service because some of the brands they don't have the parts or they don't want to, uh, yeah, get bothered with uh, uh, maintaining like old watches. So most of the time they will refuse. Yeah. So yeah, that's what you have to do. Okay, so I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a, a new website, actually, the thefrenchwatchcollector.com. I put a link down below in the description. So I'm uh, selling some of the watches that I restored on the channel. Uh, you can see some watches there, some examples of the watches that are currently for sale. And uh, as well, you uh, you can send me your watch for service. Um, you send me your watch. I will get, do a quotation. And uh, yeah, I will be more than happy to restore your watch like 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 it is right now. With, uh, with this proud of the Psycho 6139. Okay, I will just remove the case there, everything. Yeah, there we go. And we have this beautiful dial. The dial is actually in very nice condition with this sunburst effect, like this gray sunburst effect, and uh, this gray and, and black and white as well. Silver in a, in a sub counter is beautiful. Yeah, actually, it's. Uh, 6139 from from Psycho, like with this uh, this model of watches and uh, chronograph, you can you can find a lot of different version, and uh, like the Pog, like you will have uh, the Bruce Lee, you will have uh, the Pepsi. Actually, I really like this one. I really like the color scheme on this one. I found it really uh, really class, really classy, really simple but really nice. Um, so now I'm removing all the hands from the chronograph. This one is. Just sticks with this uh, plastic cover. I just it's just used for for protection. Just gonna release the dial fix screw so that we can uh, release and remove this beautiful dial. Just make sure it doesn't get damaged. Here. So I use this carbon tip tweezers and just to make sure I don't scratch the dial. And you can see this um, this uh, movement is actually quite complicated. Yes. Yeah, so first is a chronograph. It's automatic and as well, he has a day and date complication. Uh, so not not a simple movement, 
But what's nice on this uh, psycho movement is you can find a lot of information online and um, and some technical document like we tell you how to disassemble, disassemble it, reassemble it in which order. And uh, obviously later on when we put it back together, which all you need to put, where you need to put it, the amount of oil and everything. So that's pretty handy to find this type of information online. So now that the dial is removed, we are going to start disassembling the movement, starting by the calendar, all the calendar mechanism. We have this plate with a lot of screws, actually. I think it's five screws in total. There we go. Remove this plastic ring around where you have the dial coming on the top. And that is removed. We removed already the calendar wheels from the day and date. And you see some plastic part there, which is not really common, like in a in a Swiss like movement, but actually on a psycho and a Japanese movement, you can find quite a lot of not a lot, but few parts which are made uh, of plastic, which is really strange at first. But yeah, I guess if the the parts don't see a lot of wear and don't see a lot of force, I guess why spending money like on metal parts when you can make them out of plastic? Uh, I think that was probably the thinking that they had back then when they designed this movement. Okay, now I'm going to re remove this huge spring there. You see this arm? It's actually a long spring, which has a lot of tension. Just gently remove it. There we go. Okay, so now we move to the balance side and we're going to start to remove the automatic work there. We are remove already moves the weight and you can see there there is this wheel and it's pretty simple and you will see that's what psycho we see when we put it back together what they call the magic lever um it's a kind of a reversing wheel like you have on an automatic uh, swiss movements uh, for your rotor when it turns both direction it, it will wind the watch doesn't matter which way it turns it will always wind the watch in the same direction and for this, they use uh, like uh, the magic lever, which is quite clever, actually, the, the way they did it. And again, very different from what you can find in a Swiss movement. Okay, I'm just removing the power there because one of the things that uh, you have on this movement, like you cannot wind the watch. It's actually 100% automatic. And the only way you can wind the watch is with the automatic rotor from your, uh, from your automatic system. You cannot wind the, wind the watch with the, with the stem which is a bit annoying, especially when you want to start your watch. Actually, okay, you need to shake it just to give it a couple of turns with the oscillating weight inside. Uh, but you cannot wind, or if you want to fully wind the watch, for example, uh, you cannot do it. So that's why uh, when I uh, unwind the watch there, I just put a, I use a screwdriver on a screw, for, which is on the top of the crown wheel. And um, yeah, just gently, Ratchet wheel, sorry, was on, uh, which is on top of the mainspring, and has just slowly released uh, the power inside the mainspring. Okay, so now I start to remove like the different parts from the chronograph. You can see the hammer there. This is a screw I was just talking about, which is uh, on top of the ratchet wheel, which I just kept in place while I was uh, unreasing the power. And you can see there a lot of dirt, a lot of grease. Look at this dark grease, yeah? That's very thick, like it's like very hard. And uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's the one which is uh, came out from the factory or if it was... Wow, that's a lot of play as well. Okay, we'll have to see if we can address this issue. Uh, like I said, I don't know if it's the one that came out of the factory or if it was just service in, be in, in, in between, but yeah, that's all for sure, yeah. So that's why it's important to service your watch uh, when, uh, like every three, four, five... Uh, especially your vintage watches because you can see you saw the play there that's, uh, that there is uh, between the barrel and, uh, and the plate for sure if your grease become harder like uh, it will be like instead of doing his job and doing lubrication it will get harder and harder and after it will start to grind the metal and uh, the metal if it start to grind it will wear and you will have play like this and if you have too much play or if you have too much wear sometime in a parts you cannot fix it anymore. You need to change it. And uh, on some of these old watches, very difficult to find parts. And uh, and as well, 
difficult to find people that can fix them because you see, like even the brands, like I explained at the beginning, they don't want to bother like fixing these uh, these watches. Um, so yeah, that's why it's very important to to do it very regularly because if you change the oil, if you clean it, if you clean your movement uh, with an experienced watchmaker, uh, when you need to do it, like your watch will last like for hundred and hundred of years. But if you don't do it, like some parts will break or wear. And uh, yeah, it can be very expensive to find and to find like uh, these parts or sometimes even you cannot find them and you will have to remake them and it's even more expensive. Um, so yeah, that's why it's very important to maintain like your, your vintage watches. Okay, so that's it. I guess we disassemble everything on the balance side. And now we just move to the keyless work on the other side. Gonna remove the minute wheel, the intermediate wheel there. We have the setting lever spring, which is on top here. And we have the yoke with the spring, which is integrated in one part, you see, that's nice. Setting lever here. And you can see there as well the clutch and the crown wheel is, it's only one, like it's only one part. There is no two parts like on, uh, on a Swiss movement, which is uh, very interesting. Okay, so now uh, everything is uh, disassembled, or maybe we'll uh, still have a couple of things to, to, to do, but we're gonna clean the movement, clean the jewels there. Gonna just remove the jewels from the balance assembly. Just freezing this small spring on the top. There we go. Just grabbing the jewel and we clean that in the machine. Putting back the balance and the balance bridge. I like this design as well not a balanced cock because the cock is only held in one side of the parts and the other side is uh, hanging freely but you see there both sides have screws so that's what you call a bridge and not a cock there we go I'm going to do the same thing there we're just going to turn this tiny spring there until it fell into the straight into the hole there where I can get when it can release that's it I think is align now I can lift it there we go very very small so I use my thin tweezers like it's a diamond diamond tweezers which are really seen very handy to to handle small parts okay just going to as well open the barrel assembly there we're gonna disassemble and clean everything because you see there like the amount of grease again that there is like wow it looks okay inside not too dirty remove the barrel arbor and we're gonna just take out the spring just cleaning the pivot there with some e flex and all the parts now are gonna go in a basket and gonna put them into my uh, into my vintage Elma cleaning machine and all these parts will get clean and ready to get go back on the movement being reassembled being oiled again and uh, see if we can address like a couple of issues like we saw the play with the barrel, uh, barrel assembly and see if the watch will uh, run nicely again okay so few stages first we're gonna clean it in the first solution and we have two rinsing solution as well to rinse and remove the product and the last one will be a drying. I would like to use the opportunity to thank my patrons because I have a, a patron page where you can support the channel uh, because this takes me a lot of time and a lot of energy and money to do this so if you want to support me you can go there. I would like to thank David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corny, Ellen, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim and Gregory. Thank you so much guys for supporting me. I will have never imagined I will have so many people uh, supporting my channel. And if you want to join a group, you will get an early access to the video as well without any commercial and you can get your name as well uh, in the video. So thank you so much for, for supporting me. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel as well, I advise you to click on, uh, on the like button if you like the channel. Click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon you will get a reminder. I try to put the video every week, so every two weeks at the, at the maximum and uh, I really appreciate your support.
Okay, so now let's, be, before we reassemble the movement, let's focus on a case first. Um, you can see this uh, green gasket there, which is very dry and look, it breaks straight away. It's very hard. So we'll have to change that obviously. And uh, first I remove the dirt. So obviously everything will go into my uh, ultrasonic cleaning machine just to make sure everything is clean. But I try to remove the biggest part by hand. Just remove the bezel there. I will just change the crystal because the crystal is quite uh, scratch and damage. And look what I can find inside this tiny hole there. Wow, that's disgusting. That's a lot of uh, dead skin and dirt and dust, I don't know. And you think it's finished, but there is even more. So no wonder that the that the button were a bit sticky when I was activating the, the chronograph pushers. Gonna do as the same on the other side. And uh, this will go as well into the ultrasonic machine to, to, to be clean, but like, yeah, you need to remove that before. Uh, the ultrasonic machine is good to clean, like to, to finish a job very precisely, but it's not made to remove any uh, big dirts. Yeah, that's quite dirty. There we go. I think that's quite clean. Okay, I'm just going to use my press to remove the crystal to press it out. Just go down a tiny bit, that's it. It's just out there. Just use some plastic uh, inserts there just to make sure I don't damage everything. And there we go, everything is into the ultrasonic machine and you can see that especially on the bracelet, like you can see some brown or black coming out of the bracelet. Uh, that's uh, all the all the dirt to get coming out from the ultrasonic machine and that's why ultrasonic machines are really good is to get into all this uh, stuff which are not accessible and uh, and can remove all the dirt. Okay, so we're gonna start reassembling the movement now and uh, starting by doing uh, epilem treatment on some of the parts. Just leave there in uh, in epilem for a few, a few seconds and uh, after this we will put them on some uh, absorbing paper just to dry them. And the next step will be to re oil the jewels uh, for, for the balance with some uh, 9010 oil. Here we go, I'm just dropping, you see me there dropping the drop of 9010 right in the center of the jewel. There we go. And just putting the chaton back on top. You see, we have to do this twice because we'll have two jewels, yeah? One on the top and one on the bottom side. And I'm oiling the second one there. Go. And we can place them back after that on the, on the movement. With the springs that go on top, it's actually, actually the same uh, exact process and uh, when we remove it, but obviously in reverse. We we'll have to engage this spring there, make it fall in, in in the holes. There is one hole. I need to engage the three little teeth there. And for this, I just make it rotate underneath there in the groove. That's the last teeth there. You see, I just try to push it down. There we go. Just went underneath now. And we just rotate it in the groove and the spring will be in place. Perfect. We'll have to do the same thing on the other side. Placing the jewel, which is oiled. And placing back the spring there. There we go. Okay, so just I'm just checking that the main spring is turning. Yeah, it looks good. Just checking the end check as well. There is no spring yet inside. Uh, I like to do, to do this check before I put the spring, just to make sure there is no friction. And uh, before I put the spring, obviously it's an automatic watch. So I will grease the wall there with some graphite grease. Grease the bottom here. And put a new main spring. There we go. Putting the barrel arbor. Lubricating all the points which are contact to metal to metal first. Go. 
going to do the same thing on the lid, couple of uh, few drops of grease, and we can close this and we'll have, there we go, that it is closed. The Bell Arbor is assembled and ready to go back on the movement. But first, remember it was a lot of play, so for this, we're gonna use my uh, stacking set where I'm going to punch it just a tiny bit with some brown punch, just to reduce ever so slightly the size of the hole. So that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, if it's done properly, when I put it on, you see there, it doesn't fit anymore. So the hole became too small. That's actually what you want. And now with a smoothing brush, I'm just opening the hole very, very gently until it fits perfectly on, onto the bell arbor. Put it back there on top, still a lot of play. So we'll have to, to address that and actually We'll have to do this on a, on a bottom side there. So I'm closing the hole as well on the main plate. Exact same process. And you see there now the bell arbor is not fitting anymore. It's not fitting. So I'm going to open the hole with a smoothing brush. Place it back. And now let's check the, yeah, it's turning freely and look at it. There is no move anymore. That's perfect. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we're gonna start the assembly and actually on this uh, movement, they advise you to start the assembly by the keyless work. So I'm just putting some grease there on a winding stem, putting the clutch in place. It's a setting lever. Yep. And uh, we start uh, the assembly of the movement. So actually the owner of this watch, like I said, he was uh, a watch at uh, this father watch. So obviously he has a lot of sentimental value. And he asked me uh, if this watch has a, has a value. And um, I say, yeah, he has a value because, okay, first, like they are not like very expensive watches, but they're not cheap either. And uh, especially this watch has a, in this movement, has a huge history uh, in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, watch world. The 6139 actually is the first automatic chronograph from Psycho, but it's as well one of the first automatic chronograph uh, because in 69, it was like this huge race uh, between a uh, few manufacturers. Uh, who, who is going to do the first automatic chronograph? It was Zenith, obviously, with the El Primero. It was um, like a couple of brands that got together, mainly Heyer and Breitling. Um, who try to made, make as well um, automatic chronograph. And uh, people actually at the time did not talk about Psycho a lot because obviously it was in Japan and they were more focused on the, on the Swiss industry. Um, but Psycho was developing this movement, the 6139. And the story goes that um, actually Zenith um, uh, like presented the first like the automatic chronograph, which is uh, El Primero, which is still in production, which is amazing. Uh, I think they presented in January 69, um, but it was just like a prototype. It was not, they were not producing it or manufacturing it like big scale. Um, Ayer and Breitling with the Calibre 11, they um, they um, presented it in uh, in Baselworld in, in April and they had maybe like 30 to 100 watches for sale. So it was actually one the first one who put like uh, some watches for, for sale. And Seiko is still unclear today because there is some Seiko with like some serial number from uh, March uh, 69. Uh, Seiko is probably the first one who uh, produced it to like a big scale. Uh, um, and But they were very quiet about it. Um, and yes, yeah, this is, and until today, it's very unclear who produced the first, uh, who made uh, the first automatic chronograph because like Zenith says, they announced it first. Um, Heuer and Breitling said that they sold it first at Bezer World and probably Psycho was the first to, to, to mass produce it. Um, yeah, so this movement has a very, very, very important history in, uh, in, uh, in the watch world. And uh, it's, a, it's a great movement and they made a lot, a lot of watches. I don't know many thousands uh, of this movement they made in Psycho um, because you see this watch is from 67 
uh, like I said at the 77, sorry, like I said at the beginning. And the first one was made in 69. Um, yeah, they, they made a lot of watches. And as well, you can see, compared to a Zenith El Primero, this movement is uh, uh, like a little bit less, like you see, like the way it was designed is um, less uh, decorated, less nice. It was more for a mass produce um, movement watch, watches is what Psycho is doing in general compared to Zenith or the Swiss brand. Um, so yeah, they made a lot of this movement, a lot, a lot of this movement. And actually this movement, like I, like I said uh, a bit earlier, one of the only issue, I guess, is uh, there is maybe a few issues like, um, but it's like, you cannot wind it. Like uh, you cannot wind this movement, like a manual one, you have to wind it with the, with the rotor from your automatic, uh, automatic system. So that's a bit annoying. Obviously after they made all the movement, which were like with this function, but the first one uh, is, uh, yeah, it's without this function, which is a shame. And they all made like very different, like you see, for example, this one is with, with a, a vertical clutch and not a lateral clutch, like on uh, most of the Swiss. Zenith, obviously, with El Primero, it's very thin movement, fully integrated, uh, very, very, very thin uh, chronograph, automatic chronograph movement. They still, that's why it's still in production today. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a great, great, great movement, great engineering. Uh, that's why the movement was as well on a Rolex uh, Daytona for, for many, many years. Uh, it's probably one of the best chronograph movement that was ever produced. And um, the, the higher was, uh, was with uh, a mini rotor inside, like a micro rotor. So again, something very different. Okay, so now I'm starting to reassemble the chronograph mechanism. And uh, on this, you have this big spring. The chronograph mechanism is actually quite simple compared to, uh, I would say, like other Swiss, uh, Swiss movement. Um, but what's annoying on these movements are this huge spring to put in place, like which has like very different shapes that need to go behind this point, like uh, again, uh, around this point, and uh, yeah, you, you have to fold them in different places. They are very tricky to put in place. But the rest is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So yeah, that's okay. That's a minute wheel from the chronograph. The hammer. Again, that's the second spring, that which is uh, annoying to do. So it's uh, always Always use two tweezers to put them in place. Want to keep it because just to make sure it doesn't fly away if something goes wrong. Yeah, that's it. Need to go there. And the next step is to bend it again. Hopla, you see there, if I did not have my tweezers, it would have flew away. There we go. That's in place now. Perfect. Just oiling like the flat parts of the hammer when it's gonna come and hit the heart shape cam. We have this intermediate wheel there to drive the minute wheel from the chronograph. And I can put the bridge. There we go. The bridge is uh is on. Put the screws, just arm the spring there again, one of the last spring to be harmed and uh, always oil the jewels are very important. There we go, that's from the minute wheel. This is a little spring there. Keep in place and just to make sure the wheel, the minute hand is jumping nicely on the chronograph, we see a bit later on. Put the pallet fork. Which is uh, will be oil. I always do it off camera because it's quite tricky to oil the pallet fork uh, under the camera. And there we have the pallet fork bridge. And after we should be good to put uh, the balance and see if this uh, watch when to start or no. Okay, just putting a wine, just winding the mechanism there. Okay. OK, 
okay, now it's in place. Just move it just ever so slightly just to see if you want to find it's not right now it's not sitting perfectly inside the jewels oh there we go that's it perfect it's running just put the screws and it looks like it's running quite good actually so putting the two screws there on the side and we're going to move now on the dial side oiling the jewels again putting the cannon pinion which is a friction mounted there okay putting the rest of the wheels nice and we have now this plastic wheel remember that's a that's a mechanism that drives the, the calendar. So we go we put these two wheels, these two parts in plastic. We already put like this uh, plastic intermediate wheel. Just secure them with a screw. This huge spring, which need to be harmed, which is very, 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 very strong there. Okay, that's it, it's in place. Uh, not too difficult actually. So it'll be harder to put this spring. I was very afraid that it jumped. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. Always greasing like the points which are in contact metal to metal. Again, like we said at the beginning, just to make sure you reduce the wear between the parts. And as well, when you operate, for example, a chronograph or um, in this case, when you're going to operate a, a quick date change because the date change is uh, done uh, by pushing on the, on the crown on this watch. If you want to have it uh, like a smooth movement a smooth operation uh, obviously you think need to be greased and uh, and oil properly to have like uh, a nice nice experience uh, when you push on a button okay just putting there the date disc just you see like the the, the spring there i just uh, hold it with my tweezer just to arm it on the disc okay putting the plate with all these screws there. That's a lot of screws on his plate. Very small as well. There you go, and you see when you push, now I can see the quick sight function and we'll see it as well when we have the the date. And let's see if, uh, if it's changing. Yeah, we have a change, perfect. Okay, so that's working fine. Just gonna put now the day just need to arm the spring which is underneath which is quite tricky to do actually there we go to index and have a nice jump for the day just put this uh, c clip there in place okay so now move back to the balance we're gonna put the automatic mechanism which is very simple you will see compared to a swiss one as well just oiling the pivot of this wheel there just gonna put on the bottom where you have the jewel and that's what's called the magic lever. So basically you see this small arm there, they will grab on the wheel and make it rotate when your oscillating weight from your automatic system is, uh, is moving. And uh, actually it will always move the same way. Doesn't matter which way your, your weight is rotating. And that's a way you have like kind of a reversing wheel for on, on this uh, Japanese movement, which is great, which is a very, very clever way to do it. Very simple, like uh, f much fewer parts than what you have on a, on a Swiss movement. I found on a for automatic system. Just oiling the ball there for the ball bearing. And the pivot point here. Okay, so now it's done on the other side. We're gonna put back the dial, but first we need to put this uh, plastic disc where the dial is gonna sit on. It's beautiful, I love, I love this dial. just putting screwing back like the dial feed screw just to make sure the dial stay in place nicely just making the date change it's coming yes here it is so you can put back the hour hand aligned to midnight just after a date change 
love the hand as well with this uh, gloss black on uh, on uh, very very shiny steel there black polish finish on the, on the hand beautiful that's it and we do the same thing with the minute hand just gonna align it to midnight as well and a gentle press with my tool from Orotech that's it perfect let's see if the date is changing around midnight oh perfect it's like almost bang on midnight I like I like to have it like 10 minutes 10 before 10 minutes after 10 minutes before midnight but this was like perfect so I'm very pleased with the with this day change and now gonna put back the hand from the chronograph so first the second hand and now the minute hand so if you have any uh, question or if you want to have some information on the tools that I use on the video, I put some in the description. Um, but yeah, I could not put everything obviously because yeah, this is a, a passion or hobby that way you need to have a lot of tools. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down below in the comments. I would be more than happy to reply to your question on tools or any subjects. Okay, I put back the stem now. I put back the mechanism in the case. I will just put back the pushers now, but first I'm greasing, like um, putting some mollicot there on the newly put uh, O-rings, which go on the pushers. And the pusher actually are kept in place by the spacer rings that you put around the, around the mechanism. So I need to maintain them pushed and put the, this ring, you see, which has a, a slot there where you will have the slot for the pusher and the winding stem. Just put it in place. That's it. And when it's in place, the pushers will stay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Just put back the case back for now. Focus on the front. For so we put this uh, small disc around, which align automatically gonna grease this seal there with mollicot so that's the seal that come against uh, the crystal so very important that it get uh, greased and uh, that it's sealed properly put this uh, disc around pretty tricky to put in la there we go it went one side just push it on the other side and when it's in place, I can put the seal I just lubricated on top of it. And now I can put, I put a brand new, I just bought a brand new crystal for the owner because the other one was scratched and uh, damaged. Um, so a brand new one, look at it. Perfect, it's beautiful. Okay, and the last thing on this side is a bezel. So I will just align it to the 60 with the 60 on the top at midnight. And I will just use my press just to gently press it in position. There we go. I think it's in position. Just shaking. Yeah, it is. Now I can release it. Okay, I'm just gonna put back now the automatic weight, which is go straight on top of the bearing there, and which is kept in place with a screw. And I think that's it. We have the watch, which is uh, more or less done. Yeah, and look at it. Look at the magic lever doing this work on this little wheel. Perfect. And you see one side, the other side, and it's still turning the wheel. Beautiful. Putting a new gasket on the case back again to make sure the watch stay uh, watertight as much as possible. It's not a diver, but yeah, just to make sure there is no dust or any uh, humidity coming inside the watch. And for this, I will use my uh, special tool uh, to close the case back. Just align it so 
It's a custom made tool from Orotech actually that you can buy as well. I will just put a link below from uh, from the website of uh, website of Orotech. It's a great tool, and uh, Orotech as well created a Facebook group if you want to discuss uh, tools for watchmaking. I will put the link down below as well in the description. It's a great group to join if you are interested in uh, in watchmaking. Okay, I will uh, start the chronograph and see if it works. And the silver ghost, so the name of the watch is actually because you see the silver part, the silver part on the bezel, it's totally faded. Normally there is some number, and that's why this watch is called the silver ghost, uh, because the silver part disappeared. And you can see there, you can still see some numbers, but not a lot. And uh, actually, this is a fault. Uh, but yeah, that was made the name of this watch. And you see on the time graph first, so actually the amplitude is around 220. And like I said, you cannot fully wind the watch, but it will go to 230 which is not too bad for this. It's a low amplitude for Swiss movement, but for this psycho movement, it's not too bad. And uh, beat error is uh, below uh, below uh, 0 0.1 or around 0 0.1, and it's just gaining, losing few seconds a day. Really happy with the result. I hope the owner will be proud and that will remind me his father and keep this watch forever. It's a beautiful, beautiful watch. I hope you enjoy this restoration and I see you next time for my next episode. Bye-bye.